Hi, my name is Ryan Navarro, and I'm an Applications Engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I wanted to talk about a completely new workflow in SOLIDWORKS 2018 for mesh modeling. So this will build on the previous video we made for uh, the graphics body enhancements, bringing in STL and OBJ files and working with them. And mesh modeling basically allows us to actually natively work with that mesh data and make modifications to it for the first time. So let's take a look at what that means. Uh, I have here the same part file open from our uh, previous example on the graphics bodies, and there's a link to that video down below if you haven't seen it yet. And when I expand this graphics body folder, you'll see here this is my mesh file. Once again, if I show the uh, wireframe display, you'll see that it is really a mesh file, an STL or OBJ file imported into SOLIDWORKS, will typically be brought in as a graphics body that we can't really do a whole lot with. Okay. What I can do now is if I right click on that graphics body, I have a new icon, convert mesh bodies. So what this will do is convert this from a traditional graphics body type. Let's click the check mark here. And it converts it to a completely new type of body called a solid mesh body. There's also surface mesh bodies as well. And the way you can tell is by this little icon. Uh, looks like a little triangular mesh icon next to the body. So what does this mean? Well, now in terms of the software, it's actually being treated like a solid. Uh, if I want, I can go ahead and apply a material to here. And we'll see that we're actually able to get mass properties on this closed solid mesh body. Okay, There are limitations associated with these that we're going to discuss later. So. Uh, before you get too excited, there is a number of limitations related to the mesh bodies. But essentially, we are treating this as a solid. So what this means is I can now also do operations on this to modify it. So previously, we could never modify an STL. If we had to make changes to the STL, we were out of luck. Now, if we want to make a modification to this mesh body, we can do that. Just go ahead and create a sketch here. And I can take advantage of those other enhancements, anchoring to the mesh with my sketch relations here. Um, and what I'll do is I'll extrude this as an extrude feature. And I'm just not going to merge the result into this mesh body. So for this mesh modeling workflow, we'll need to go back to kind of the old school methods of modeling using Boolean commands. So what I've done here is now I've created a separate boss extrude feature, which created a separate solid body. And I can take that separate solid body and convert it also to a mesh body. Okay. Click the check mark. And now I have two mesh bodies. They're both kind of the same exact type now. So I can select both of these holding control, right click and combine these operations together using a Boolean combine. This makes a single resulting mesh body now you can see uh, with those two bodies combined. So we can actually modify STL files, OBJ files, mesh file types using these mesh body workflows. And I could then at the end go ahead and export this off as a modified STL file. And we'll see that we have that native mesh data there that we're passing through. So let's talk about some of the implications of this. Why would you want to do this? And what are some of the limitations? So the main limitation to understand is that these mesh bodies, even though they look like nice, smooth parts on the screen, and SOLIDWORKS is treating them as a surface or a solid, a mesh surface or solid, uh, they can't be exported to neutral file formats like IGES or STEP currently. So um, if this needs to be a part that you want to send to the machine shop, we can't get away from the fact that it's actually still a mesh file. If I turn on the mesh display, you'll see that there. It's still actually a mesh file. We're just able to natively work with it within SOLIDWORKS now. So mesh modeling workflow isn't going to convert your STL files into a real solid IGES or STEP file, for instance. It's just going to allow you to work with those mesh files, and you can re-export them in mesh format if desired. Okay. These also have a number of limitations around drawings. Um, but I expect we will see a number of enhancements to what we can do with mesh models in the future. We're also limited in the terms of the actual operations we can do on the mesh bodies. But before we get into that, let's take a look at a more complicated example of what we can do. So here I have open 
a mesh file generated by a 3D scan, again, as represented as graphics bodies. And suppose I want to bring this through to 3D print. I'll focus first just on the lower portion of the bottle here, so I can either hide or delete the other graphics body. And currently, this is a surface here. If I take a cross section, we'll see that there's no wall thickness to this mesh whatsoever, so this could not be 3D printed in its current state. So if I wanted to make this model manufacturable, even just for 3D printing, I would need to somehow add thickness to this. Well, thankfully, we can convert not just the solid bodies, but also these um, graphics bodies of a surface here, convert these to a, a mesh body. So I'll go ahead and do that, and then I'll be able to use actually some surfacing commands on it. Now you'll see it's smoothed out. Again, it's actually kind of deceiving because it's going to look like a really smooth surface. I can even do zebra stripes within SolidWorks. And SolidWorks is treating this as a new mesh surface. So it's going to look very smooth, but we have to remember that underlying is the mesh there. right? So when we go to export, we're only going to be able to export that raw mesh data currently. And it also allows me to do a number of operations on it. So I can go to surfaces. I can thicken this now if I want to, just by selecting the face there, input my desired wall thickness, click OK. And just like that, I've gone from a mesh surface to a mesh solid. If we look at a cross section here of that mesh solid, we can see my wall thickness. And I can do much more than this as well. If I have other features already modeled, in this case, I have some threads that I want to bring in uh, that were modeled as a separate part using the SOLIDWORKS thread feature. I can just go and insert those in here. This is a solid body currently. We can see that separate solid body. I would just go through that same process of converting that to the mesh and then combining those two together. So remember, these may come from 3D scans or they may also come from other modeling software, mesh-based modeling software, where uh, a lot of those softwares are really good at creating these organic shapes, but they don't have things like Hole Wizard. They don't have the manufacturing details. So this mesh modeling workflow also enables collaboration with those mesh modeling softwares. If you want to bring in the overall shapes and detail them out a little bit, you'll be able to do that now. And you can see we have a nice cross section on this model. We can go even a step farther with our detail. We can see a version of this bottle that I have where I took a slightly different approach. Rather than just thickening it straight off the bat, I did an intersect command to turn this into a solid body. We can see if we look at the cross section. And then that enabled me to do some other Boolean type operations. Like for an indent, I was able to put a kind of a tool body here to indent and cut that into the, into the part, as we can see here, to get a nice emboss. And I was even able to do things like add logos and text on here, since this is going to be 3D printed, uh, using additional commands. We can also use RealView Graphics or PhotoView 360, as we saw previously, and again, leverage special appearances to just drag and drop in onto the model and see those update. You can see on the screen here, I actually took this from an initial 3D scan, which previously we couldn't do anything with in SolidWorks, added that additional manufacturing detail in, thickened it, and I was able to actually produce a 3D printed prototype printed on our HP 3D printers that's actually kind of a functional prototype. We could actually squeeze the bottle and get a feel for how it behaves. We also made some caps for these as well. So let's look at a couple other examples. Here's that belt buckle we were looking at previously. And you can see with the simple, just a, just a combine operation, a combine subtract Boolean style operation, I was able to make a quick mold cavity from this. So if you are doing really quick turn manufacturing and you want to be able to create maybe low volume, rapid prototype molds, that's another option available to you. And we can actually put toolpath on a mold from an STL file. It's just not ideal. 
right? You're not going to get a really great quality smooth surface. Uh, but for low volume, quick turn, reverse engineering, rapid prototyping, that may be acceptable. And the other place that we see this potentially having a big impact is in the medical industry. So you might have a surface body from a from a CT scan, for instance, like we have here. And we could just convert this into a surface mesh, which could then be used for a surface cut operation if you have any types of fixturing or other things that you need to design customized to a patient. If I just extrude a, a block here as a real simplistic representation, again, convert that into the matching mesh body type. Now I'm able to do things like a surface cut, cut with surface to put a cavity into that block, matching that CT scan data. So there's a number of applications here. Let's take a look quickly at all the operations that can be performed currently on these mesh models. We can do the Boolean type operations, combine and intersect, subtract. We can do split command and also trimming of surfaces. We can use the move copy bodies command to reallocate, translate and rotate these bodies. Cut with surface, delete face. We can shell and thicken. We also have offset surface, extend surface, and split line. So there's really quite a lot you can do. And again, I expect this feature list to expand. And again, let's just look at what we're actually doing here. The main place this impacts, in my opinion, is if you're going from a mesh file, either from a 3D scan or from some mesh-based modeling software, and you want to send that back out as a 3D print, or you want to send that back out back to another mesh modeling software as a mesh file. Previously, in all previous versions of SOLIDWORKS, we always had to go through this additional step of converting that mesh file to traditional surfaces or solids in order to be able to do anything at all with it. So if you had a mesh file and you just had to make one simple little modification to it, you would have to go through this whole step. Now we can bypass that step altogether and keep that native mesh data and just manipulate it as we need to and re-export it out. It's worth noting though, there are still reasons why you would want to manually convert a mesh to traditional surfaces or solids. And this would be if you need the neutral file export, like an IGIS or step export, or you need to be able to use mod modeling commands that aren't on that previous slide I listed. Also, if you need the highest quality of curvature and smoothness, then this may be the best workflow for you for production ready surfaces. So the process for converting these, there's really three main approaches. You either manually remodel based on the graphics body or mesh body, extracting curves, tracing over profiles of cross sections and lofting and boundary features. You can use scan to 3D which comes in the SOLIDWORKS professional or above level. That's a reverse engineering add-on and allows some automatic surface patching like you see on the left here to take your scan data and patch it with true native SOLIDWORKS surfaces. Or for the most professional level solution, we also offer a third party tool called Geomagic. And that's a really industry leading reverse engineering tool for quickly converting meshes into high quality surfaces and solids. So again, just to summarize, this new mesh modeling workflow in SOLIDWORKS 2018 allows you to go from mesh data, make modifications to that if you need to, and prepare it for rapid prototyping with 3D printing. We do this by making sure we convert the graphics body to a mesh body, and then also convert whatever other bodies we want to combine or subtract into a mesh body, and we have that Boolean capability there. Or we can use our surface modeling commands like thickening, trim, extend, etc. Again, where we see this potentially fitting in for our customers, potentially medical industry, where we're quickly customizing parts to a patient, any types of reverse engineering or maybe consumer products applications where we want to be able to quickly make minor modifications and iterate, and also the topology optimization in Simulation Professional, because that will output a mesh body as a result, and you may need to make minor modifications to it. 
there's a number of ways the tool can be useful. Again, bear in mind its limitation that it cannot export step or address neutral surfaces that you're working on the mesh continuously all the way through. So at the end, you'll be able to export a modified mesh file which is a huge capability for anyone doing 3D printing or 3D scanning, working with these mesh models, maybe even just trying to collaborate with someone using a mesh-based modeling software. Now we have dedicated tools to work with them inside SOLIDWORKS. So I hope this video was helpful, and thanks for watching.